fresh pines and my soul thirsts. My soul is ever thirsting for you. Like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's a great joy again to be in this uh, co-cathedral of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and uh, especially having so many of our, my brother priests here. Uh, and during this Mass, uh, members of the laity, the, uh, the priests will reaffirm their priestly promises uh, to serve you uh, with integrity uh, and honor and love. So uh, pray for us. Pray for me too, please. We all need your prayers. We support one another uh, in this uh, Christian calling that is common to all of us. And we also will bless the holy, they're not there yet, but they will be, uh, the holy oils used uh, throughout the next year in all of the parishes in this Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston. They'll all be blessed here on this occasion. As we begin our Mass, we acknowledge before the Lord that we are sinners and we need Him for forgiveness and strength. Let us do so now. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant the being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, 
to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. 
Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord.
oil. We use it in many ways. We put it on our salads. We fry things in it. Uh, we use it in our cars. Oh, we may rub our back with it if the back is aching. I guess it's not surprising since, as the Latin phrase goes, sacramenta propter hominum, sacraments are for human beings, that God makes use of this substance that is so common in our experience, oil. Uh, God uses water, of course, in baptism, bread and wine in the Eucharist, the gestures made by hands in the sacrament of penance and the ordination of deacons, priests, and bishops, but he uses oil also as a sign, an instrument of his blessing. Today in this Mass, I will bless three kinds of oil, that of the catechumens, those seeking admission to baptism, that of the sacrament of the anointing of the sick for the strengthening and healing of the sick and feeble. A woman I anointed uh, last year told me when I saw her recently that uh, when she went back to the doctor, the cancer was gone. All I did was use the power of the sacrament. The Lord did it. And the oil of chrism used to convey the gifts of the Holy Spirit in confirmation and to anoint new priests and bishops. These oils play an important role in the life of our Catholic people and in the ministry of us priests. Why do we have sacraments? To give us the grace we need to respond eagerly and effectively to the Lord's commission to give witness to our faith by word and deed and to invite others to follow him. Jesus Christ is central to our Christian vocation. And as the book of Revelation reminds us, Jesus Christ is the faithful witness who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for our God, his God and Father. By his death, he has done what we could not do for ourselves, won the forgiveness of our sins. And he's gone beyond that to, by making us capable of offering our lives to God, that's a priestly act, huh? as an acceptable sacrifice. This is true for all the baptized. Huh? Jesus' way of life shows us how to live in obedient union with God and in loving service to our neighbor. It all starts with our baptism. From among the baptized, God chooses some men for ordained ministry as priests. Our hands, brothers, you remember, hands anointed huh, with chrism, for those hands will hold the sacred species as our words, taken right from the Lord, transform them into Christ's body and blood. And our hands will extend pardon to repentant sinners and blessings of many kinds to the faithful. And in collaboration with the laity exercising their baptismal priesthood, we ordain priests seek by our ministry of word and sacrament to build up the church in holiness and in service to humanity. Like Jesus, each of us ordained priests can say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Our preaching filled with divine wisdom, can gladden the hearts of the faithful. As St. Francis de Sales said, our preaching should enlighten the mind and warm the will to embrace God's truth and live by it. Our ministry in the confessional frees those captive to sin and encourages them to cherish the new life that Christ offers them. Our sound teaching our church has a body of teaching that is very useful and helpful to people 
We need to expound on that teaching to our people. But that teaching can give sight to those who are blinded by the errors of our times, which like a many-headed monster devour the consciences of the weak and the ignorant. Our commitment to justice, taking many forms, can help the oppressed go free and contribute to a better world for all people. And we have priestly heroes to inspire us. Blessed Stanley Rother from Oklahoma had trouble learning Latin and Greek in the seminary, but he mastered the language of the indigenous people descended from the Mayans that he served in Guatemala. And he served them with love and had the courage to stand by them as they sought justice for their families. It cost him his life, but he became a faithful witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not long ago, we lost a great priest, Monsignor Ed Sadie, who served the Catholic people and those not of our faith for more than 60 years. He was the rector of this co-cathedral for uh, many, many years, more than two decades. He was, even as I got to know him in his old age, still an energetic man, an energetic priest, dedicated to helping others and to building relationships with the broader religious, ethnic, and racial communities. These two priests, anointed as the Lord's instruments to bring Christ to others, are models for us who share their calling. Now, Jesus Christ is the supreme model for our priesthood. He came not to be served, but to serve. He washed the feet of his disciples to teach us all to do the same for one another and for others. We'll reenact that at our Holy Thursday liturgy. We must be convinced that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Almighty, the one sent by the Father, to liberate humanity from sin and death. With that firm conviction, my brothers, we can announce by our words and by our actions that Jesus Christ embodies the good news that God loves us without measure and without conditions. In a world of much bad news, this is good news our people need to hear. We've been commissioned and ordained to, pronounce, to proclaim that good news. When people put their faith in the Lord Jesus, they are freed from self-preoccupation and of useless anxiety. They are free to love and to serve in the image of the God who freely loves and serves them. Living that way, they will inherit the fullness of life in heaven. This is our mission as priests. It is why we preach and teach and celebrate the sacraments. It is why we advocate for justice and peace and join with others to build a civilization of love. As our people respond to our message and to God's grace, we have a privileged place to view the drama of salvation unfolding before us and to have a special role in its progress. As we renew in just a moment our priestly promises, let us vow to rely more on the Lord's grace than on our energy and talents. May the Spirit anoint us once again to serve the Lord and his people with integrity and love. I took the deacon's line, but sorry. <laughs> My beloved brothers and sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on the apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? 
Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? And are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God, of the Holy Eucharist, and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ, the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? Please be seated. Now to the, uh, the laity and religious present, huh? dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the high priest so that they may lead you to him who is the source of our salvation. And please pray also... <laughs> Please pray also for me that I may be faithful in the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ hear us, Christ gracious May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us shepherds and flock to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And we have a number of our uh, men who are preparing for the priesthood uh, here with us today, too. Please keep them in your prayers and pray that the Lord will send us more. <laughs> Thank you. The blessing of the O God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from heaven, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you graciously have brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit, may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The oil for the catechumens, when our
O God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The oil for the chrism, born of love of God the Father, dwelling in the virgin's womb, give us light who share this chrism, close the Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to our God, our Almighty Father, that he may bless and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O oh God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, Receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise to, as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. And in the last days, all of this has been clearly revealed. When every offense is removed through the waters of baptism, the anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful, joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased with him, your only begotten son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism, and with it, you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, 
and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrament, the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood, the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your peop holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Mark our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace with all of you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It's said that some saints uh, would actually have kind of an, a sweet odor about them. I think the bishop is incensed to the Mass to maybe provide a little bit of that sweetness, which you may not have naturally. Uh, but uh, we are, in a spiritual sense, the way we live produces a, a pleasant and attractive scent in the world that can bring others to the Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel with your lives. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.